Welcome to Business Lines State of the Economy podcast where you will find insight analysis and the story behind the numbers. Hello and welcome to Business Lines podcast. I'm your host Hari Priya, tech reporter for the publication. In today's episode we will be discussing how India's web3 startup ecosystem is evolving and growing. To give us more insights into the landscape, we have with us today Rohit Jain, MD at CoinDCX Ventures and Parth Chaturvedi, Investments Lead at CoinSwitch Ventures. Thank you so much for joining us today, gentlemen. To begin with, you guys could probably give us some overview of the current pool of Web3 startups in India. How many startups are there? In what stages are they? And what major verticals and sectors do we see them in? In terms of sectors that you know we're seeing Web3 startups in India from, it's across the board. So it's actually fairly reflective of what we are seeing globally as well. So some of the sectors that we are seeing global interest and interest from Indian entrepreneurs is, of course, infrastructure in the Web3 space. That's that's the one area where the majority of uh, development activity is happening. Secondly, uh, I'd say DeFi. You know, DeFi is of course been around for a very long time, and there are fairly well established protocols as well. But we are seeing so much more innovativeness in this space. And with DeFi, I I think we're still on day one. And you know, now with the infra scalability problem solved, I think we'll see a whole host of new DeFi oriented applications. We're also beginning to see some a lot of development on the application layer, especially around social fi. as well as game fi and we are seeing some of these startups come up from india as well so it's um, you know in summary i'd say it's reflective of what we are seeing uh, in terms of areas of interest globally as well let me pause there parth you want to add uh, something to it yeah sure so first of all harpreet i think there's this misconception that uh, web3 building has stopped that is not the case at all i would say uh, so our fund has been active since the last one year or so we've seen we've talked to more than 300 odd startups in india 300 plus on ground builder activity has not stopped in fact uh, i would say that this is the perfect time to build like bear markets are where uh, you know the actual believers in projects are the ones who are building projects and uh, sort of speculation and fraud gets away from the markets so we have seen diligent work happening here in india again india remains developer powerhouse of the world so a lot of these projects globally have a indian teams or indian developers working here in terms of teams as we rightly mentioned we now have the infrastructure play sort of like materializing and we are seeing like you know apps or decentralized applications able to scale much more easily another area that i personally think is going to be key importance is easing of user onboarding in the previous cycle we uh, you know faced these challenges of private keys of how to handle your crypto now in this market because of innovations like you know multi party computation and account abstraction it will become much more easier for the masses to onboard into web3 that's one of the key areas besides the ones that rohit mentioned that are worth highlighting in the institutional side of things i think real world asset tokenization is a huge play and uh, we are seeing more and more institutions exploring this space parth you were mentioning about the building momentum but given the current downturn do you think the growth momentum has somewhere slowed down is the stream still as enticing for founders as it was say one or two years ago again there are two parts to this on the builder side i would say there is not much of a slowdown like there are projects that are you know actively building and actively trying to like you know raise money on the flip side on the vc side on the funding side that is where the real impact of macro is visible as we are now in a world where interest rates are going to stay higher for longer risk capital has become much more you know difficult to find and deploy a lot of vc funding has slowed down and it's not just in web3 it is across like you know sectors probably ai is an exception an outlier but uh, rest like if you see vc funding across sectors it has like you know reduced both in deals as well as quantum and uh, i think investors are in that wait or wait and watch state where they have a lot of cash lying as dry powder which they, i think will come back into the markets once we see uh, macros improving up and just kind of echoing the sentiment haripriya you know in terms of has the growth slowed down or building activity slowed down you know what we like to say is that even though we are going through a bear market when we talk about crypto prices really not but we are in in an absolute bull market when it comes to building activity globally speaking and in india as far as builders go we are still in a bull market and very much so a lot of valuable companies are created in bear market and we are seeing that even today i think the one thing that has happened is that the you know when you think about the noise to signal ratio the noise has certainly come down which means that some of the non serious builders 
who were attracted to this sector, maybe even for the wrong reasons. That crop of entrepreneurs has reduced. But serious builders who are extremely bullish about this space, who've been building in this space for a while, their build activity hasn't slowed down at all. Uh, if anything, you know, they're hunkering down. And uh, as a lot of infrastructural problems in the Web3 space are being solved, they're getting more creative with their solutions and coming up with strong value propositions. Adhering to the funding momentum that you just spoke about, what exactly is happening? You guys are investors yourselves. What are the downsides here? Are these the more riskier bets that VCs feel and hence the money is not flowing here? Or why is this wait and watch approach being followed? When do we see bigger rounds happening? We only have a few unicorns. How is this evolving and how, when do you think this will get better and grow more? On the risk side, Arve, it just like directly links with macro. So think of it as like, if I can get US treasuries at 5%, uh, why would I want to, you know, risk my money and get like probably like a 10 or 15% in a much riskier like, you know, investment. As in when interest rates go up, in general, riskier assets sort of get lower allocation from investors. That is one part of the problem. The other is, uh, you know, the general... Uh, I would say a sentiment that prices bring with it. I, and I think that has sort of seen a turnaround in the last month or so, where prices have also started to come back. And again, we are getting the outside VCs, the VCs that are not Web3 natives, again, starting to show interest in the space. During the bull market, if you could raise probably, let's say, in a month's time with just an idea, right now, investors will only fund you if you have some traction and probably the due diligence cycle will be longer, you will take a quarter to close. So that's the difference in terms of, uh, you know, how they're approaching the space. And having said that, I think uh, a turnaround is just on the corner. may maybe adding to that. So I think macro is certainly in impacting the VC industry and that's just not in Web3, right? That is probably in impacting all risk on asset classes. But particularly when it comes to Web3, I'd say we're going through a phase of evolution and every innovative sector kind of goes through these multiple cycles of innovation. And... Uh, we were in a bull market. The funding activity was very different at that time. We are in a bear market. It's a part and process of the industry maturing, both the founders and entrepreneurs, but also the investors. So, for example, I think earlier, the sense of FOMO was slightly more in investors, which is why rounds were getting closed much quicker and at higher valuations. I think now investors are looking at it with a lot more diligence, with a, with a lot closer eye. And in, in that sense, I think this industry is moving in the right direction. So while it may seem like the overall quantum of investments, dollar invested is slowing down, but the reality is that is the right thing for the industry. And we are moving in the right direction, not only from a builder point of view, but also from an investor mindset, diligence point of view as well. What would be the one advice for anyone who's getting started today and is looking for funding? What do you think is the best way to get investor attention? My view there is uh, the fundamentals of business don't change, whether you're in Web3 or Web2. Even in the Web3 space, the fundamentals remain the same. And the fundamentals, especially at an early stage, Haripriya, as you can imagine, number one and first and foremost is the team. Second is, of course, the value proposition. And just making sure, you know, you have a very, very strong value proposition also, it's, it's solving a real problem because in the Web3 space, I think there is an additional challenge of what is a problem today versus what could be a problem a couple of years down the line. And that's one of the things that I see some entrepreneurs do. They're trying to solve problems which are not a problem today. And, uh, you know, those founders may find it a little difficult to, to raise capital. So solving problems which are more here and now. So, for example, Parth was mentioning account abstraction. Uh, is rolled out and with that a lot of new business opportunities are coming up right the wallet space is evolving very very quickly there are new execution nodes that are coming up essentially with scale and program the masses coming in i think a lot of interesting use cases open up so people you know should solve uh, the problems which are here and now and be adapt to the changing environment in some ways Yep. To, you know, sort of second what you said, uh, just in terms of how a uh, founder should approach this space, he needs to identify problems that are causing pain points in more broader adoption. Most of the protocols or, you know, ecosystems are trying to solve for user adoption right now. And uh, account attraction is a great example where so many startups are trying to make it easier for people to just uh, get onto the decentralized app, apps and apps. That's one, uh, like, you know, theme that founders should, like, you know, look into. As mentioned by Rohit, that, you know, uh, early stage investing is more art than science. 
So there are a lot of you know moving parts where execution risk is involved, where there is a uh, you know sort of confidence that you have to have in the founders for them to be able to uh, execute on their vision. The trends might change. You might be trying to ride a trend wave now, which doesn't exist in the future. To build a long-term sustainable business, both the investors and the builders need to identify uh, you know these longer-term trends or themes. Could you guys give more specifics on what are the newer areas that startups are working today on? What are the problems that they're solving? And in general, what are the green fields that these startups could explore to build use cases for that would be interesting? Could you quote some examples of people that you have spoken to for context? Some of the names that we think like on account abstraction piece, I think in India specifically, we are seeing a lot of this come up, wallet infrastructure, you know, play in general, is to highlight uh, Fetch, which we recently talked to. Then there was uh, another one uh, called Comet, which is building a wallet. Plana Finance is another wallet play. Three, four like good companies that are already like scaling, seeing some adoption on uh, the wallet infrastructure space. Besides that, like a couple of other things that we have you know invested in as well are the real world asset tokenization space. So don't think of it as just real estate tokenization. It also can apply to financial assets, so bonds, U.S. treasuries, private credit. And in our case, the example is Polytrade, where uh, they are tokenizing uh, trade finance invoices, basically helping uh, emerging market economy uh, suppliers reduce their working capital cycles by tokenizing uh, their receivables. Let's say an uh, Indian manufacturer manufactures for Walmart. He generally has like uh, you know receivable of 90 days. His capital gets locked up. Instead, he can uh, tokenize that invoice, trade invoice, and uh, go to DeFi pools and raise money. So, very interesting use case. We are seeing a lot of real-world asset tokenization. Innovation happens, so not just in trade finance. There are people looking at U.S. treasuries. U.S. treasuries on chain have skyrocketed this year. And bigger banks are also exploring this space. So, JP Morgan is doing a, a pilot on tokenizing bank deposits. Yesterday, I think MasterCard came out with like a similar statement on how bank deposit people might spend with the next big uh, uh, you know, theme to look out for. And, you know, maybe just adding one or two more things onto that. I think, you know, one theme that we are excited about is uh, scale. And the theme there is that, you know, even in the Web2 space, you know, once the Web2 space started seeing a massive scale, you know, in the late 2000s, maybe 2007 onwards through 2010-11, you know, that scale created new challenges and opportunities. And, and pretty much the entire data industry, the way it looks today, the formative years were in those late 2000 years. So now that scale as a challenge has been solved even in the Web3 space. And we expect in the next bull cycle for the masses to come in, given all the things that are happening from a scalability point of view, usability point of view through account abstraction and, and the other initiatives. We absolutely expect the masses to come in. And once masses come in, I think, one interesting challenge and problem to solve will be managing the scale and helping companies really leverage the scale in some ways. So I think data as a problem is very interesting. That is one theme that I'm excited about. The other, you know, that I remain excited about is uh, DeFi. And, you know, the call out over there, Haripriya, is that DeFi was probably the first use case that got to, you know, some semblance of a product market fit in the Web3 space. And people tend to believe that, a lot of the primitives are already set in stone you know, in the DeFi space, for example, DEXs, lending, borrowing protocols. But we are seeing, you know, new models of DEXs come up, new DEXs now beginning to get to scale, new lending, borrowing protocols as well. So DeFi certainly remains a very strong area of interest. And the other I would, like I was saying, was uh, data, uh, which would come with scale. We keep speaking about India building for the globe a lot, but where does the rubber meet the road? Do we have enough examples to actually say that we are in action, this is happening? And in the broader context, the effort of the Indian Web3 startups, how do they fare uh, against their global peers in matured regions, say, like US and the UK? I think on this one, Rohit, if you can like chime in, and again, there's a fundamental difference in terms of like how we are approaching the space. We are 
trying to back like you know india first project projects that have some kind of india connect in uh, their teams or uh, developers having said that i totally agree that um, maybe it's because the ecosystem hasn't matured enough but global competition for indian startups is pretty strong and i would say that uh, you know in certain ways the just the founder intent or the team's execution capabilities are much better even in certain asian uh, jurisdictions us still remains like you know sort of the benchmark in terms of like great projects coming out from there having said that we do have the capability we do have the talent I think it's just a matter of you know time where the ecosystem matures and we start building uh, world-beating uh, web three uh, projects. What are your thoughts? Yeah, no, echoing that sentiment again, uh, Hari Priya. You know, just at a high level, taking a step back, as far as Indian builders in the web three space are concerned, you know, our long-term view is that India is going to see more unicorns coming out in the web three space from India than we saw in the web two space. Even though India did a phenomenal job in the web two space as well. you know that's our fundamental thesis and um, there's a reason for that the indian web3 developer has much more of a builders mindset uh, and an entrepreneurial mindset than maybe even the web2 developer especially in the early days uh, yeah. of the industry so that's at a very very high level but uh, when you take a micro view haripriya and, and a more immediate view i agree with parth you know there are leading indicators and there are lagging indicators I think the leading indicator over here is the fact that the developer pool in India is growing massively. The amount of interest that we are seeing from the developer community in India is just phenomenal. For every chain in the world, tapping into the Indian developer community is critically, critically important. India is probably one of the top three markets for them from a developer pool point of view, and that becomes a leading indicator to saying that uh, you know these same developers will eventually become builders you know once they have enough experience under their belt so i think all the leading indicators are pointing absolutely in the right uh, in the right direction and in addition to that we are already seeing some very interesting startups uh, being built out of india i think last week only we had like a couple of big announcements like starter labs is one i think which got funded by act type uh, again indian founders and uh, the fact that you mentioned roit that most of the big chains are looking at india last i think quarter or two quarters we have seen india heads been appointed for several different uh, ecosystems we had adaptors we had avalanche uh, all of them are like trying to set up like you know small india offices where they can tap into the developer pool and uh, get those developers to build on their ecosystem makes oh, sense absolutely and and maybe just last point on that hari priya so you know at coin dcx we very recently organized unfold as well um which is an annual web3 event and as part of unfold uh, so it's probably the largest web3 event in existence in india but as part of that we also held a multi chain multi protocol hackathon and this was one of the world's largest multi chain multi protocol hackathons and and this i'm comparing to you know global standards the kind of developer activity and interest we got and the kind of outputs we got out of that hackathon were phenomenal you know all the protocols that parth was mentioning including avalanche sui um, and a lot of other chains were present there and um, you know i think everyone uh, was impressed by the quality of developers and the quality of output there Totally, and uh, Arpya, you should definitely do some coverage for ETH India, which is going to happen in December eighth, ninth, tenth. It's probably the largest ETH, uh, you know, hackathon that happens globally. So, right, uh, expectations are like over four thousand devs are going to come out. Yes, I think it's uh, time that Indian media also becomes a lot more proactive in covering stuff. So, probably we'll be able to do that. Coming back to the India space, probably you can also. address the regulatory uncertainty could you guys give us some insights on what are the limitations that web3 startups face in india given the regulatory uncertainty what is it that founders are facing currently and what are the measures that has to be taken by the entire ecosystem the industry as well the vcs the players and the government what do you think are the improvements that can be done for the sector probably not the right spokesperson for most things regulatory slash policy but what we've seen uh, from a vc perspective is uh, uh, you know a slow and steady approach by the government which again like i think is the right way to go about it because this asset class is moving so fast in terms of innovation that uh, if you frame laws or fix laws in a rush you will probably need to like you know amend them fairly quickly i think what uh, is happening post the uh, you know the g20 presidency where india was able to establish like a, a road map for a global framework for uh, you know digital assets i think that is a great start there has to be global coordination no one country can regulate it in a certain way 
because it is a global asset class and uh, there are enough positives around to see how much uh, positive regulation can help the space grow uh, good examples are you know singapore and dubai dubai specifically has vara now which is like a dedicated regulator for uh, digital assets and uh, we have also seen like a lot of like you know indian founders being more comfortable setting up uh, uh, singapore or uh, dubai offices as their head jurisdictions so uh, as in when like you know uh, the regulatory environment or clarity sort of emerges in india we will see an explosion in uh, of uh, new people being able to venture out and risk building in this space i think they are sort of being curbed down by the uncertainty but uh, i wouldn't say that it is resulting in a complete annihilation of the industry that is not the case the government is very receptive and they understand you know the value that we uh, bring to the table yeah no absolutely uh, so i think you know regulations in the space aren't easy but it's moving in the right direction both in india and globally uh, in our uh, opinion uh, that's one two of course with more regulatory clarity that is one lesser thing for the founder to worry about you know founders and especially indian founders i can i can say more confidently about them because you know we've been one but uh, indian founders want to do the right thing you know they uh, and in in that scenario having regulatory clarity certainly helps and we are moving in that direction right that said there are multiple states and and, and multiple uh, even individuals within uh, in the government who are taking a very very proactive stance as far yep. as promoting web3 startups are concerned uh, while we are seeing an overall positive momentum across india you know i think for example bangalore telangana and hyderabad mm-hmm. all of these regions are doing a lot of things proactively to encourage web3 founders uh, to develop out of there so overall i would net net i would say things are moving in the right direction and on the policy front i think all industry players are sort of working together we have bharat web3 association which is uh, you know the industry body that is sort of like you know putting forward our thoughts uh, our request uh, in front of the government they are both like you know point switch point dcx are like the key members there and we also have other industry participants and now we are planning to get more startups also into the ambit of bharat web3 association so we can give like a more holistic industry what what the industry really wants from uh, public policy makers that's great that's interesting to hear uh, so broadly these were the questions we had for you guys today thank you so much for joining us we hope you had a good time